And this is the one simple key that can make or break a good grip. Whenever things go wrong, it's because this is in the wrong position. Now, no matter if you're a beginner golfer or an advanced golfer, this video is gonna be key for you because it's gonna allow you to make sure you have the correct hold on the club. Reason being is our hands are the only contact we have with the club. Get them in the right position and things are gonna naturally fall into place. However, get them in the wrong position and it's gonna be shooting ourselves in the foot right from the get-go. We're gonna to have to make compensations and ultimately it's gonna be very, very hard to be consistent. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So before we place our hands on the club, we've got to make sure the club face is in a square position. Whether you prefer to take the, the hold with the club on the ground or the club up in the air, that's up to you. So whether you start with the club head on the ground, just make sure that club face is pointing directly at the target, or if it's up in front of you, then make sure that toe is pointing straight up to the sky. So now we've got that club face in a square position, now we can start to talk about placing our hands on the club. And whenever we're talking about the grip, we always start with our top hand. So for me, as a right-handed golfer, that is my left hand. Now, the key to a great grip is in the detail. So where are we trying to place this club in our hands? Well, if I was to draw a line from the base of my pinky finger all the way up to the first knuckle joint on my index finger, that would create this line that runs across the base of my fingers. A lot of people that I see get the grip wrong place that line on the bottom of the grip, on the base of the grip. Now, if I do that and I take my grip, you can now see I have a very weak grip. Now, what does a weak grip mean? It means the V is pointing outside of my left ear and I can't see any knuckles on my left hand. Chances are I'm also gripping it in the palm, which is what you can see right here. We want the base of the fingers to go on the side of the grip. And this is the key detail that I see that can make or break a good grip. So make sure that that line on the base of the fingers is going on the side of the grip. Now, once you've done this, then what I want you to do is just close your fingers up. Now, straight away, you're going to notice that you're really holding this club in the fingers, which is great because this is going to offer us some leverage. Once we've done that, then I just want you to wrap your hand over so the meaty part of your left hand of the, of the palm is right on top of the grip. As you can see from this front on view now, the sort of snuff box right here on my left hand is gonna be right on top of the grip. So if I was to hammer a nail through my hand, it would touch the grip right there. Now a great way of just making sure you've got the club in the right part of your hand is just to take the bottom three fingers off. If you can do this and let the club just hold there and it stays there quite easily, that means you've got the club in the right part of your hand. If it suddenly falls out like this, that means you've got it too much in the palm and you need to get it more in the fingers and get that, that heel pad on top of the grip more. Well, now we wanna pinch our thumb and our hand together and then just wrap our hand over just so that the left thumb is ever so slightly down the right side. You can see there's no real space between my thumb and my hand right there. If there was, what that could do is potentially lose the support the top and you can see the club falls very, very far. So if you do see a bit of space between your thumb and your hand, and at, at the top of your swing, you do see that club sort of go too far, that's gonna be a direct link right there and you need to adjust your grip to fix that. The V created between the thumb and the hand is pointing somewhere up to my right collarbone and I can see about two to three knuckles on my left hand. Now that is gonna put us in a great position to where we can control leverage. As you can see, it's very easy for me to set the club up and down. This is gonna be a great power source. The club face is gonna to want to return naturally back to square. Again, this is gonna help us massively with accuracy. And also this good grip position right here isn't gonna to cause too many wear marks in your glove. So now let's place the right hand on the club. And the key, just like the left hand, is to be specific. So the first question we got to answer, and arguably the most important one, is where are we trying to place this club in our hands? Well, if I take the second knuckle joint on my middle finger and my ring finger, and I place that right on the bottom of the grip, you can now see I've got a really nice hold in the fingers. And this is crucial, because this is going to give us a great feel, but also great control of the club. Now from now, I just want you to close your fingers up. Now the key from here is I want to cover my left thumb with my right palm. And as I do this, from my perspective, the hands really feel together. There's no space between the hands. My right thumb is ever so slightly sat down the left side of the shaft and my thumb and my hand are relatively close together. They're sort of pinched together right there. There's no space between my thumb and the hand. From this position, just a really great checkpoint is number one, are the hands together? 
if they are fantastic. Number two, we don't want to be seeing that left thumb, so have we fully covered it? And number three, where is that V on the right hand pointing? We want to see that V pointing roughly in the same position as the left hand, which is up to the right collarbone. This is going to give us the highest possible chance of returning that club face back to a square position at very high speeds. This is going to help you improve your consistency and ultimately allow you to become a better golfer. We've got to talk about the three different ways we can link our hands. So why is linking our hands super important? Well, often I see some beginners get their hands very far apart. So now what happens is essentially we've, number one, shortened the club massively. And number two, when we do get our hands split apart, the right hand now has way too much force involved. So it can now throw the club out. Again, you'll see a lot of scooping in this situation. So as long as the hands are together, I'm personally not too fussed with which grip you would use. There is obviously the overlap grip and the interlock grip. They tend to be the two most popular, but let's just say you need a little bit more power in there um, than definitely going into the baseball grip, the 10 finger grip can massively help you. So let's run through each of these three grips. So firstly, the baseball grip, the 10 finger grip, the key with this is all the fingers are on the grip and they are all uh, nice and close together. We don't wanna see any space in those fingers. Now, again, this is probably the most unused grip out on tour, but this is definitely going to be something that for beginner golfers might be a little bit easier. Now, the second grip we can do, which is the overlap, which is where we lift the pinky of your right hand. We're then gonna slide that hand down so again all the fingers are touching and we're just going to rest it uh, in the crevice of our index finger and our middle finger on our left hand now again in this position this might be more suitable to players that have really big hands um, it can feel more comfortable to some players and again for other players it doesn't feel more comfortable this is all personal preference for you now the final one is the interlock. This is the one that I use. This is the one uh, Tiger Woods uses, Jack Nicholas uses. And this is where you're going to lift the index finger on your left hand. You're going to lift the pinky on your right hand. And then you're just going to interlock them together. Now, again, you can see the key with all these grips are all the fingers are together. There's no spacing. There's no pulling apart. Everything is together. This is going to get the hands working as one crucial unit. And that is the key with this. We need this club to be working at speed around our body. If our hands are separated and apart is going to be very, very hard to control the club. Versus if the hands are together in one snug unit, we're going to have far more chance of being successful in delivering that club correctly. So now we've got our hands on the club in a correct position. Now we've got to talk about grip pressure. And there are so many analogies out there, but frankly, they've never worked for me. The best thing that's worked for me because I can do it on the golf course is just to grip the club up in the air in front of me. Now from here, I just want to lasso that club head. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just feeling the natural weight of the club. If I can move the club around like this, it means my forearms are relaxed to the right amount. And it also means my hands are relaxed as well. Now the key with this is that it is tight enough to allow myself to not let this club fall out of my hands or to let somebody pull it out of my hands, but it's loose enough to where I can just have this club moving very fluid. So if we can do this, and I would recommend doing this out on a golf course, you know, before you hit, just do a couple of those. That's gonna get your hands in a really nice relaxed position. And then from there, you're gonna be in a great spot to then hit your shot. So that is how you hold the club in a relatively neutral pattern. Now, like I said, there are different grip types, stronger grip types, weaker grip types. And again, if you want me to have a look at your grip, talk to you about the different matchups required for your grip, if it's in a good spot, if it's not, then I offer online lessons on the Skillist app platform. Now, the link is in the description down below. So if you would like a lesson, I'd love to have you on board. I'd love to help you with your game. If you have any video requests as well, please drop them down in the comments as I'm trying to answer all of them. And also, if you've liked this video, then please give it a like and subscribe. I hope to see you back here soon.